Hi. Um, I have some things to say. So, Peter Pettigrew. This is something that I have been wanting to talk about for years, but I never do because it seems like such, like you just, you can't, like, nobody will agree with me on this. <laughs> oh. And like, I'm not the type of person to like, go into debates on things ever, because I hate conflict, I hate anything like that. But, oh, this bothers me. Every time it comes up, it bothers me and I just, want to put my two cents into the world and hopefully make some people see things in a different light. I am here to talk about Peter Pettigrew. I don't think Wormtail is a bad person. I said it! Is he a villain in the story? Yeah, probably. That's kind of his role. But like, I don't categorize him in the same level as like Voldemort or Umbridge or whatever. It's, it's a completely different type of character to me and People are so mean to Wormtail. People say he's a monster, like what he did was unforgivable, and like, I just don't agree. Wormtail is a human being, and he deserves a little more respect. <laughs> let me just get into it, because yeah, let me get into it. So Wormtail was born around 1960. We don't really know much about his childhood, although I am very interested, because something must have gone down. He went to Hogwarts and got sorted into Gryffindor. A lot of people think he shouldn't be in Gryffindor. I get it, because he is not a brave person. He is not courageous. He is not a typical Gryffindor. But we also know that he was a hat stall. The sorting hat took like more than five minutes to decide whether he would be Gryffindor or Slytherin. What I'm guessing is that the sorting hat was leaning towards Slytherin, but that Wormtail just did not want to be in Slytherin. Why? because Slytherin is kind of an intimidating house. Like, I would be very intimidated <laughs> if I had to walk up to the Slytherin table. I think what Wormtail really wanted was to be safe. That's kind of like <laughs> what he wants in life, always. Safety is important to him. So I think he kind of saw Gryffindor as kind of the ideal, like what he wanted to be but could never be. So I think he wanted to be in Gryffindor because that's where the brave people were and also maybe the popular kids. As you know, James and his crew were kind of like the popular kids, which is why he wanted to be friends with them. If you're friends with the popular kids, you're safe. People are not going to bully you. I think if he hadn't been friends with the rest of the Marauders, he probably would have gotten bullied. He would have been a very easy target for bullies. And so I think that's why he clung to them so much because once again, all he cares about is his own safety. That is his thing, which is why I am so interested in his past and like his upbringing because something must have happened for him to be like that. I think he was traumatized as a child or something for him to be that obsessed with his own safety. But anyways, I digress. So he's friends with the Marauders. He hangs out with them. I'm sure they didn't treat him like an equal though. Let's be real. I'm pretty sure, especially James and Sirius kind of looked down on him, maybe even bullied him a little bit. For example, when they all turned into Animagi, Wormtail was left having to be the rat to open up the <laughs> freaking Whomping Willow, while James could be a stag and Sirius could be like a dog, those are cool animals. And then, you know, but they needed Wormtail to do the dirty work. You know, so I don't think they treated him like an equal, but Wormtail didn't care. I think Wormtail just, you know, he was just glad to be in their group. So that brings me to a point where, um, when people tell me Wormtail was a monster because he betrayed his friends, I always think like, were they really that good friends? I don't know, but we don't know. Maybe they were, maybe they really treated him nicely, but I feel like they probably didn't. Not that that gives him the right to like, betray them to the Dark Lord. I don't condone that at all. <laughs> like what he did was, it was terrible. I'm just saying, when people say like, he betrayed his best friends, I'm like, yeah, well, I'm pretty sure James wasn't that good of a friend to him. That's just one thing to note. We don't know, but like, bro, like, I don't, no, no. I call bullshit on James and Sirius treating Wormtail with respect. I don't think that happened. But anyways, sometime during his time at Hogwarts, Voldemort was gaining followers and like becoming kind of a big deal. Again, Wormtail wants to be safe. He wants to be on the winning team. That is the sole reason why he decided to become a spy for Voldemort. I don't think he has the same ideals as Voldemort. I don't think he cares about killing mudbloods or anything like that. I don't think he cares at all. That is not what he is about. He really just cares about his own safety, which again, 
I'm calling childhood trauma. And so yeah, he goes over to Voldemort, which again, I'm not condoning the things he did, but I get it. I understand it. It is very human what he did. So many people in real life have done this kind of stuff. Like when Hitler was gaining followers, so many people followed him. And now people look back and think like, why were so many people following him when, you know, Clearly what he was doing was wrong. It's the same thing. Maybe some of them probably believed in the same things as Hitler, but a lot of them were scared. A lot of them thought, if I follow this guy who is clearly on the winning path, I'm gonna be safe, my family's gonna be safe. That is why people do these things. And it's human. It is like so honestly relatable to me. Like, I mean, I'm not saying I would do it if I were in the first Wizarding War. I don't know what I'd do, but I'm not gonna like bullshit myself and be like, I would totally be in the Order of the Phoenix. I don't know. I don't know if I'd have the bravery for that. Probably not. <laughs> I'm just saying for people who haven't been in that situation, I think it's maybe hard to imagine and people always think they would choose the noble path, the courageous path, but I think a lot of people wouldn't. That's how it's been in real life and how it was with Voldemort and with Wormtail. He just wanted to be safe, okay? It, it's a human thing to want and I think that's valid. <laughs> And another thing to note is that he was so young. He was pretty much, he was a high school kid, you know? A very insecure, weak-minded high school kid. That's who he was. People do a lot of stupid stuff at that age. People go bad for a little bit and start rebelling and doing crazy stuff. That is the time when people do that. Why? Because they're insecure, because they're scared and they want to find themselves. They do what they think is right and then they learn from it. Unfortunately, in Wormtail's case, it kind of branded him and it kind of never let him go. But I honestly believe that he never meant to hurt anyone. That is not what he is about. He doesn't care about hurting anyone. He just wants to be safe. I feel that. I feel that on a very high level. <laughs> Again, I'm not saying that any of the things Wormtail did were good, honorable, not at all. What he did was terrible, but it is understandable and it does not make him a monster. To me, Wormtail is one of the most human, relatable characters in the whole series. I get his reasoning and I'm so confused as to why so many people don't get it. So he went to Voldemort and started being a spy, eventually gave away James and Lily's location. I believe that he probably felt real bad about that, but you know, if Voldemort tells you, I'm gonna kill you, or are you gonna tell me where your friend lives? It's a hard position to be in. I always hate the moment in the movie where Sirius is like, I would have died rather than to betray my friends. Every time he says that, I'm like, really? Like maybe he would. James Potter or Sirius Black, I'm pretty sure they would give their lives to save their friends. But I think a lot of people won't. They say it as if it's like some kind of given thing. Like obviously you're not gonna betray your friends, you're just gonna die instead. But like, let's be real. Think for yourself, seriously, if someone put a gun to your head and said, I'm gonna shoot you right now, or you're gonna tell me where your friend lives and like, I'm gonna, you don't know what's gonna happen, but probably something bad's gonna happen to your friend. What do you do in that moment? Think very hard and honestly to yourself, what are you gonna do? Are you gonna die or not? I think most people would save themselves. I think most people would not die to save their friends. And I know that sounds really bad, but like, I don't know. I don't know what I would do in that situation. It's very hard to imagine, but I can't say with confidence that I would die to save my friend. I don't know. I might just save myself. I don't know what I would do, especially if the person I was saving was someone who treated me not that nicely in high school. You know what I mean? I think a lot of people who really, really hardcore villainize Wormtail are kind of just hypocrites. I just, I think it's hypocritical because what would you do in his situation. At that point, like, what do you do? It's a hard situation to be in, guys. Like, come on. It just annoys me so hard how people see that as like the worst thing someone could have done. Because honestly, what would you have done? It just, it gets me riled up, especially because I know that Wormtail never wanted to. He never did anything with malice. He just kind of snowballed into this world and then suddenly he was like in too deep and oh, we're in trouble. Now I'm gonna have to betray my friends. Oh no. It was bad. It was bad, but... <laughs>
I feel bad for him, man. He is one of the saddest characters in the whole series. Mm -mm. And of course, after that, he goes into hiding, turns into a rat, and disappears because obviously, safety first. So then fast forward into the second Wizarding War, where Voldemort was rising to power again, Wormtail was helping him out, he was like milking Nagini and stuff like that. During this time, very much again, he went to Voldemort out of fear, not loyalty. He even tries to escape from Voldemort, saying that he will bring Voldemort any wizard that he needs, as long as he can leave Voldemort's side for just a little bit. I think he was trying to escape at this point, but obviously Voldemort wouldn't let him go because he knew Wormtail would probably leave him. Obviously his heart wasn't in it, he was just doing this out of ginormous fear for Voldemort. He was pretty much stuck at this point. He was stuck in this servant position which he didn't want to be in, but you know, too scared to leave because obviously Voldemort is ruthless, he would just murder him the instant he did something against Voldemort. So yeah, that's the pickle they were in. I think during this whole time he was struggling with himself, feeling guilty for what he did, but not knowing how to fix it because he's too scared to do anything about it. And then finally, when he has the opportunity to do something right, he does it. He does the right thing. He actually does it. He gets the best redemption that is left out of the movie. <sighs> That is my number one thing that I hate that they didn't put in the movies. Oh, I like yelled at the screen when I saw that in the cinema. His redemption arc like means so much to me. I don't know. It just really like, it makes me cry every time I think about it. After all these years, he finally stands up to Voldemort. He has to go get Harry and he can't do it. He can't bring himself to do it because he knows it's wrong. He knows it's wrong and he obviously doesn't want to do it. He does not want to be bad. He doesn't want to do any of this. And this hesitation gets him killed by Voldemort. His iron... I call it an iron hand. His Voldemort hand kills himself. It's so sad. It's so freaking sad. I cannot. To me, that was a death just as sad as the others. Like, I cried when I saw that. I was like, Wormtail, you did it! You did it! You stood up to... I mean, you kind of stood up to Voldemort because he was dead before he could really do anything. But, you know, it's it just... That moment of the book really shows how his intentions were never bad and he just did not want to be there. He did not want to do it anymore. I think it's a very powerful part of the book. I think it's a very powerful message. I think it just made me fall in love with his character even more. I love Wormtail. I don't care what anybody says. <sighs> so yeah, in conclusion, I don't condone anything that Wormtail did. All I'm saying is that I understand it and that I think he is a very, very interesting, relatable character that I think a lot of people need to look at a little bit differently than they are now because I think a lot of people villainize him and don't even think about why he does the things that he does. I just wish people would kind of see him in a different light. Not that he's a hero. I don't think he's a hero. He's definitely in the villain pile and he's definitely done terrible things. But he is, to me, the most relatable villain in the series and it just means a lot to me. I don't know. It's Maybe it's because I'm a coward. Like, I know I'm a coward. Gryffindor is like the furthest away <laughs> from my vision. But I'm also not a bad person and neither is Wormtail. I don't think he's a bad person. Obviously, he was a very extreme person in his cowardice and self-preservation obsession. <laughs> but to read about a character like that, I just think is great. I just think he's such a good character. Ah, oh, he's one of my favorite characters in the series. And like, whenever I say that, people think it's weird and people don't get it. But, you know, I don't know. Maybe after watching this video, some people will get it a little bit. I don't know. What do you think? Please let me know in the comments. I just wanted to stick up for him a little bit because all I ever hear about Wormtail is people hating on him and that just breaks my heart because he never wanted any of this. Let's be a little nicer, shall we? <laughs> Anyways, this was my rant for today. I don't, I just, I feel weird doing this because I am not the type of person to do this face to face ever. To a camera, I can do it. So that's why I'm letting it out here. Yeah, just, just let me know. If you don't agree, please tell me why you don't agree. Um, but yeah, that's gonna be all for today. I hope you have a wonderful day. I hope you uh, found a new way to look at Peter Pettigrew and I'll see you in the next video. <laughs> Goodbye. <sighs>